Make America great again. It's a phrase that each and every one of us has heard repeatedly. We've heard it on TV. We've heard it on the radio. We've seen signs on bumper stickers and in yards. We've seen it all over social media. It's literally everywhere. We've heard this phrase so often that I fear the words may have lost meaning to some people. Was it simply an empty catchphrase to tap into the emotions and, and the tug at the heartstrings of the masses during an election cycle? Or was this phrase used to imply exactly what the words say? That America is not currently great and we somehow need to go back to a time when she was. This issue is one that I've pondered ever since the first time I heard this and I'd like to discuss it today. What will it take to make America great? Again? Welcome back to Facts and Opinions with Don. I'm Donald January Jr. I hope you're having a great day because you are an amazing person and I am absolutely thrilled to be speaking to you right now. I really am. Thanks for being here. Now let's get to it. Here's a sincere question. What do you think when you hear the phrase, make America great again? Do you picture America going back to having a stronger economy that the blue collar worker flourished in? Maybe you imagine this phrase meaning we need to make a show of strength on the world stage as governments and Americans of the past that you admire may have done. Or maybe you picture this phrase as a call to go back to a specific time that you want to have absolutely no parts of. I've spoken to many people with many different views and I've come to this conclusion about this phrase. No one's ever really gotten any clarification on what it means. So kind of like that briefcase in Pulp Fiction, it means whatever your imagination wants it to mean. So what will it take to make America great? Again, for starters, we're gonna have to stop waiting for politicians to make changes in our own personal lives. If you've ever done that in your entire life, how's that worked out for you? Exactly. Next, we all have to make a conscious effort to listen to those with opposing views rather than surrounding ourselves with only views that support how we feel. Take me for example. When it comes to social issues and issues that have involved protests and discussion about injustice, I often understand and sometimes share the view of the protesters and those calling for equality because I've experienced some of these issues that they bring attention to and I may have even felt their pain at some point in my life. But instead of being overcome by emotion and lashing out at those that don't agree with me, I choose to engage in civil discourse to gain an understanding of how those that may disagree with me feel. I also try my best to articulate my feelings and past experiences that have molded me to think as I do now. This course of action almost always ends well. And me and the people that I engage in conversation usually walk away having grown at least a little bit more. When you see people that close their ears and minds and harden their hearts to opposing views, I urge you to turn from them and walk in the opposite direction immediately. Don't ever be blind to the fact that some people don't want to grow. Some folks want to be divided. And I also fear that some people may not be capable of overcoming their childish and counterproductive mindset. And let's not be naive to the fact that some even make a decent living by being closed-minded and angry. Think about it. Everyone with a television knew that during the Obama presidency, every single time they turned on Sean Hannity's show, they could expect some good old Obama bashing. Nearly a decade ago, Sean Hannity had a show with Alan Combs called Hannity and Combs. Hannity had a conservative view while Combs gave liberal, liberal views, so they sort of balanced each other out. I actually used to watch Sean Hannity sometimes back then because 
I would get opposing views in one place. Fast forward to today. There's no Alan Combs, and oh boy. Just imagine if Hannity woke up one day and saw things differently and decided to start speaking highly of President Obama when President Obama was actually president. Not only would the entire world be wondering what the hell's wrong with him, but he'd also lose money, he'd lose advertisers, and he'd lose viewers. People that make a living by consistently behaving a certain way put themselves in a position of not being able to grow. And it's not just with Sean Hannity, I just find him to be more, um, a, more of an extreme example. This lack of growth and frowning upon change is sometimes seen in political parties as well. Tune these people, pundits, and so-called leaders out because they will only keep you stagnant. And staying in one place, it's not good for anybody. My third and final bit of advice on how you can contribute to making America great, again, is to just be happy. You know what makes you feel good and fulfilled, whether it's spirituality, your family, or just doing the right thing. Cling to that in times of uncertainty and turmoil. Don't give in to the negativity and the hatred, because regardless of if you're reacting or initiating conflict, the consequences are always the same. You get what you put in. Create a better future by doing the right thing today and every day. America is a diverse land filled with freedom and opportunity. It's up to you and I to make sure we keep the positivity and hope for a better future alive. Though America is already great, we have an opportunity to make it better. But it will take a collective effort to rise above the silliness and the hatred that sometimes surrounds us. Don't allow those that have no intention of growing keep you stuck on the ground. Well, that's all I have for today. This is Facts and Opinions with Don. I'm Donald January Jr. Thanks for being here, ladies and gentlemen. And until next time, peace.